Hello, welcome to lesson 3 of Tani's GWTP course. Now we are going to talk about how the presenters interact with the views. Since we are using Y binder, first we have to give an Y field for the widgets on the Y binder XML file and send them to the view class through the Y field annotation. When the view class has have access to the widgets, then we'll give access to the present give them give access for the presenter through the presenter's view interface. L so let's do that on Eclipse. Here we have the label, the text box, and the button that I want I want the presenter to have access to it. So first, on the XML file, we have to give them a Y field attribute. So first label, I'll call it first label, Y field first box. So the text box will be called first box. And guess what? The button will be called first button. All right. Now we have to declare them on the view. So Y field label google.com.google.quit.user.client.y that's usually the package for GWT widgets. First label. This is the name I gave on the Y field attribute on the XML file. And I'll repeat that for all the other widgets. Now the view have access to all those widgets. How do we give them how do we give the presenter access to them? So we need the getters here. I'll type shift alt s generate getters and setters. I'll select the getters, but not the widget because it's not we didn't put it there. Okay. This is the widget. And we already have a, a getter for it, so we didn't need to generate another one. And now we have to do declare those methods on the view interface in the presenter. So I'll copy this here and paste on the view interface here in the presenter. Let's remove what shouldn't be here. Now the view have access to our widgets, uh, the presenter, I'm sorry, the presenter have access to our widgets. To see that working, here on the own reset method, I'll call get view dot get first box dot set text first text. this line here. So when the presenter is being resetted because the user navigated to it, a little bit later we will explain that better, the presenter sets the first box text box text to first text. Let's reload it. Oh. Okay, some random problem. So here, first text. Well, usually, as soon as you save your Java file, it, it, it's a good idea to wait a few seconds before reloading. I went too fast. And so what, what matters is that it worked. You have the text box here saying first text. So our presenter now have access 
to the widgets in the view. And that's how it should work. The view should be as dumb as possible and the presenter should have all your business logic code. So, what is the presenter lifecycle? First, presenters are singletons. So, if you have the user going to a, to a place, which is a presenter, going to another place and running to the first place again, we are not initializing those presenters every time. They are singletons. The presenters have those four methods that are interesting to know. The prepare from request, this is where you get the URL, URL parameters. We will do an example of that in a bit. The own bind method, every time the, the presenter is instantiated, own bind is called because you want to register the events you process. We will do that when we are learning events. And to do the presenter processing that happens bef just before the presenter is shown to the user, you have the option of using on review and on reset. On review is called every time the presenter was hidden and it's shown to the user. So the user navigated to the presenter page place when it was at another place. But if the user navigates again to the same place, but maybe with different parameters in the URL, then on review it's not going to be called, but on reset will be called. On reset is called every time the user navigates to the presenter. On review is called only every time the user navigates to the presenter, but not if the user is reloading the same presenter or navigating to the same presenter. So I usually go with on reset. There are cases that on review is the best option, especially with pop-ups. So usually I use on reset because it's called every time. We don't have to worry about was the user here before? Something like that. So let's do something more fun and add another presenter to our project. As I said before, when creating the first presenter, every presenter has its own name token. And this is important because we have a unique identifier that we use on the place URL for that presenter. So we will add another presenter, we need another name token. Well, to navigate between presenters, you can do that by typing the presenter you the presenter's URL URL using the name token you gave you give you you gave to it, to it. You we can use an hyperlink widget and it's really nice to use hyperlink widgets because if the user uh right clicks and say open in a new window it's going to work if the user presses control and click, it's going to open in a new tab. So that sort of thing works really well with hyperlink widgets. Or you can use a place request, say the user click the button and you want it to go to another pre pre place or presenter, then you instantiate a place request and it you can navigate to the to another presenter. So let's do that on Eclipse. So here on the client package, I will create the second presenter, the same way we created the first. It's also going to be a root content event here. It's a place. We I want to use code split. This will be called second. No place annotation anymore because I already have the default place annotated and I'm not using the gatekeeper, but I want to use the own reset. Let's open the second presenter files. Okay. So here I will have an hyperlink that 
goes back to first and the target history token is first and I also want to have a label with a Y field because I want to test the URL parameters here and it's called second label really fast I want to give access to this for that label on the second presenter so Y field label second label get second label I did said really fast okay done here on the second presenter I want to use the prepare from request method that I, that I talked about and I'll have a private string here called name and name will be a parameter from the URL so get parameter name and here you have to set the default value if the parameter is not in the URL what's the default value so default value and the only set I want to do get view dot get second label dot set text name so what I've done here was in the prepare for request method I saved the name parameter value on the name variable here and I'm using it on the on reset method okay so on the first presenter I want that when the user clicks the the button there I want it to navigate to the second presenter how do we do that so I'm okay so we have uh, to access the button so get first button we will add a click handler here if you know GWT you know how to do that Oop. and when the user clicks then we need a place request call that request and we initialize it using the name token well it's recommended that you use the name token constant class that the GWT plugin manages for us so that if you want to change that name token to something else maybe because you're using the you want Google to index your Ajax application which it's not covered by this course but but it's possible that you, you, you will use it so if you want to be able to change it later use the constant and here I'm going to use something magical I'm going to inject place manager and the magical thing about that is that although I didn't in initialize this attribute here it's, it is going to work and the magic is done by the inject annotation we will be talking about dependency injection later and so we created our request and now I'll call place manager dot reveal place using the request we created because we created another present another class another file in our project we have to stop the development mode here in GWT and start again double click it's processing the files okay so if I click here it should go to the second presenter and if I click here it should go back to first and here you can see that the label have a default value so how do we pass a value to the URL here 
So here on the on click event, I will add uh, dot with name because I'm setting the name parameter, and I'll set it to get view dot get first box dot get value or oh, get text. So you create a request, you have to say the name token and the parameters. Let's see it working. Reload. Before it was saying the full value and now the label says first text. Now if I say GWT P, GWT P is the best, it's going to say GWT P is the best. And you notice that we have the name token here, the, param the name parameter here. So this is how we pass parameters on the URL. Now remember that I told you that you can control click uh, an hyperlink and that works. So let's test it here. I'll open this link in a new tab and we are back to the first presenter. Okay, that's it for lesson three. Go to lesson four now. Thanks.